So for this video, we're going to talk about x-ray absorption. And the reason we want to talk about this x-ray absorption is because if you recall the figure that I drew earlier and the characteristic x-rays that are formed, and I mentioned these are used for monochromatic wavelengths. Well, we want one wavelength. And what you see here is what often happens is that you get multiple wavelengths. And so we are going to use x-ray absorption to try to isolate uh, just one wavelength. And so since um, the intensity of k alpha over k beta is around 5, so this is much more intense, we're going to try to get rid of this, sorry, <laughs> we're going to try to get rid of this k beta peak and just get one wavelength here. So that's the, the, the process that we're going to do. And what we want to do is we want to use a, uh, a material called an x-ray filter. And this is a material that strongly absorbs radiation and not, but it does it selectively. So it absorbs some radiation uh, more strongly than others. And so we want to basically try to uh, absorb all the K-beta and let K-alpha go through. So that's the idea with the filter. But we do need to sort of first just take a look at X-ray absorption. So let's just look at sort of the general principle here. So let's say I have a material of thickness X. So this is my material. And I have x-ray radiation coming in, our incident beam. So uh, the intensity of it is capital I and then not or zero. So that is the incident um, x-ray radiation intensity. And then coming through the other side of it, some of it is going to be absorbed. And so our intensity decreases. And so that value is I sub x. So this material has density of rho and thickness x are incident intensity is i naught as i mentioned and the it's reduced to i x and the x refers to the thickness so after that much thickness, the intensity is reduced to this Ix. So if we want to find this intensity, we have a very uh, well-defined uh, equation for that. And so we can get Ix as a function of the incident by an exponential related to this equation here. So this is an exponential, and we have mu, which is the linear absorption coefficient. And we have mu over rho, so this term, which that, uh, that fraction is referred to as the mass absorption coefficient. So generally speaking, what we get from this and what we get uh, about these materials is that the higher the atomic number of a material, so the higher z number, leads to a higher mu over rho, so mass absorption coefficient. So the higher uh, the atomic number, the higher the mass absorption coefficient is. So that means that generally this mass absorption coefficient 
increases with increasing radiation wavelength lambda because if we think about the higher wavelengths that transfers that translates to a lower lower energy and so let me switch over to the, the slides for a second and show you a graph of this mass absorption coefficient all right so here's a plot of the mass absorption coefficient on the y and then the wavelength on the x and remember that wavelength increases that means the energy decreases uh, in the opposite direction so essentially energy energy is decreasing in this direction wavelength is increasing so what we see here uh, in this plot is that the again generally speaking the absorption goes up when the wavelength goes up the, it absorbs more when the energy of the wavelength is lower but what we also see are some interesting sort of deviations so we see some sharp um, edges or jumps so one here uh, three here and so forth these jumps are known as absorption edges and they co correspond to the ejection of electrons so you can think of we're basically going through the same process again our x-rays are coming through the material and at very specific points those x-rays can eject electrons in that material and that's what's going on at these specific sites so this edge here this ejection point is the ejection of a k shell electron and then up here l1 2 and 3 uh, you see uh, ejections at those three positions so we have edges here so that's interesting you know that's a deviation from the main uh, absorption feature and it's very much connected to how we generate characteristic x-rays so this is going to be useful because we're going to use these edge uh, absorption edges to match this with our target material so that we can filter in just the right way so that we absorb a lot and then less uh, of the other part that we want to know so these absorption edges are actually very handy for finding materials that filter out x-rays of just the right radiation all right so that's going to take me to the next slide here so what we have is the intensity versus the wavelength and this curve has the k alpha peak and the k beta peak so this is for copper and on top of that superimposed on that you'll see that you'll see one of these edges <laughs> sorry about this <laughs> all right so uh these edges um correspond uh, to where we uh, on this side uh, we have high absorption and then low absorption over here so basically we can try to find a material where the absorption is really high in the area that we want it to absorb so k beta and then really low uh, where k alpha is and so we find the just the right combination there so that we basically remove or at least really limit the absorption and therefore don't let any of the k beta radiation go through and so for this is for copper and for copper we find that the perfect filter is actually nickel so if we put uh, nickel in front of the copper k alpha and beta radiation uh, this is what its absorption spectrum looks like and so it kind of selectively filters out beta but allows the k alpha to uh, pass through with only minor losses so we really get rid of beta but we don't really get rid of alpha that much and so for for copper the classic combination is nickel 
So let me switch back over to the paper and sort of show you uh, how we can sort of select filter materials. All right, so for copper radiation, we see that nickel is a really good filter because of its absorption edge. And so uh, we have a rough uh, guideline for selecting filters. So if we have metals near atomic number 30, then the atomic number of our filter should be the atomic number of the anode, so the target, minus 1. Oops, sorry. Uh, the atomic number of the anode minus 1. So this is how we get that copper, atomic number 29, and the uh, so this is our anode, and then nickel has atomic number of 28, and this is our filter, right? So when you're looking around 30, this is the relationship that we have. So we know that copper and nickel um, work well together. And you can basically uh, look at pairs of elements that are very close together within one atomic number. And that's how you kind of select the filter.